This video is all about one of nature's most amazing and awe-inspiring natural phenomena that occurs in our atmosphere, which is a cuminolimbus cloud or a thunderstorm cloud. How they work, the stages of formation, and all the different effects these clouds produce in our atmosphere. This is the Earth Science Classroom. A cumulonimbus cloud or thunderstorm cloud is an amazing sight to see in nature. Now they occur in certain parts of the world during certain times of year, but they require certain elements in the atmosphere at certain conditions to form. Now these are special clouds because they really cover three distinct layers of the atmosphere, the troposphere, and in some cases the stratosphere. Now these can occur and form, the cloud base can be in the low-lying cloud height of around 2,000 feet up to and passing through the middle layer of clouds, 16,000 to 23,000 feet, up to the upper troposphere into the tropopause and occasionally into the stratosphere of 40 to 50 even 60,000 feet above the Earth's surface. And these clouds are towering vertical beasts in the atmosphere which carry a lot of energy, a lot of water vapor, a lot of moisture and can create some of the world's most amazing weather phenomena like tornadoes and lightning and extreme winds and downdrafts. And these clouds occur on regular occasions and they're just absolutely incredible. So prior to forming our amazingly large and vertically developed cloud, the cumulonimbus cloud, you start with the fair weather conditions with some partly cloudy, some cumulus clouds. And again, cumulus means heap of, in this case, condensed water and rain droplets. Now you have some moisture in the atmosphere, you have some light winds, you have some rise in air, but you have somewhat stable conditions based on the height of the clouds and the layering of the clouds. But as mentioned before, conditions will change, the pressure will become lower, and you start to get the accumulation of more and more of these cumulus clouds forming and coalescing, and you have accretion of these clouds in the atmosphere, and you start to get more rise in air, and you start to produce this unstable conditions right amount of water vapor and moisture condensing to stimulate and be the catalyst for these amazing cumulonimbus clouds to start to form. A common method to form these large thunderstorm clouds or cumulonimbus clouds is in the mid latitudes to have a frontal system create the rise in air that's required to form this vertical development and the cloud to grow vertically. So you have the cold front, which is moving fast, in this case from the left, which is fast and dense because the cold air is gonna hug the ground and it's gonna move quickly in with the cold front and it's going to displace the warmer air that it's moving into. And this warmer air has more capacity for moisture and it's lighter and it moves slower and it's going to be displaced and moved by this cold front that's moving in quickly. Now the one place it's going to move initially is upwards. So in addition to the cold front coming in to displace the warm front and warm air, you also have to have the warm air be full of moisture. In this case, let's say over the United States of America, where you have these mid latitude cyclones form in the south of the country around like Texas and south of the Rockies, you have this cold air moving down from the Rockies, meeting this very warm, moist air coming off the Gulf of Mexico. And you have these amazing conditions that are going to set up the building blocks to create this thunderstorm cloud 
when these two air masses collide or the cold air overtakes and displaces and moves the warm air contain lots and lots of water vapor and moisture which is the ingredients you need so the stage one would be the cumulus stage the growth stage of this thunderstorm cloud where you have the two fronts meeting and the warm air being displaced and you have this large updrafts large amount of air and water vapor and moisture moving upwards very quickly vertically cooling down adiabatically and creating this larger vertical cloud whereby the latent heat is being released during condensation to then slow down the adiabatic cooling from the dry to the wet or saturated adiabatic lapse rate, which is 5 degrees per kilometer. So it's going to slow down, heat up the atmosphere, recondense more water vapor, and that's how these clouds grow vertically through latent heat and condensation. And this cloud's going to grow into a large enough cloud where it goes from the warm cloud, which is the atmosphere and the cloud being at a certain altitude whereby it is above zero. So it could be anything from 20 degrees at the cloud base to 5 degrees at the middle of the cloud. And the top part of the cloud, which is growing vertically, would be in the cold cloud, which would be any temperature below zero. Now, water isn't going to naturally or always condense and freeze below zero because it may not be pure water but pure water is going to freeze at minus 40 degrees or minus 40 degrees fahrenheit so there's two sections of this cloud through vertical development so in order to go from the stage one which is the cumulus stage the growing stage the accretion stage where the clouds are forming there's vertical development there's movement up of the air there's updrafts and this is caused primarily in this case with frontal system with the cold front displacing the warm air and the moist warm air being pushed upwards cooling adiabatically condensing latent heat being released and clouds growing vertically in this case all the way up to the tropopause which on average is between 8 kilometers to 15 kilometers above the surface again depends on latitude over the equator it will be higher over the poles a lot lower but this is usually happening around the mid latitudes so looking at between like 10 to 11 to 12 kilometers of the surface so looking at between 45 to 6,000 feet and in some cases the cloud can even overshoot as seen in the diagram into the stratosphere which at that temperature is around minus 45 to minus 50 degrees celsius so now based on the vertical development and the continued development and the continued supply of heat and energy and moisture from that warm air and the cold air coming in to push up the warm air at the surface you have this vertical development of this cloud to the point where it touches the tropopores and creates this three layered cloud based on the temperature the warm cloud as mentioned earlier warmer than zero degrees cold cloud between zero to minus 40 degrees celsius and then a super cold or super cooled cloud section above that is minus 40 down to minus 60 in some cases which is going to be composed and formed mostly of ice crystals and this is how we can get the, the accretion and the accumulation of ice crystals being formed into hail and grapple through updrafts and downdrafts and the internal wind system of this cloud moving these particles these ice particles these ice crystals and condensing them pushing them and forming larger particles and this is also how we can create polarization in the cloud and have a negative positive charge being created at either end of the cloud high and low and that would create a chance to form lightning now this would be cloud lightning or cloud to cloud lightning and in some cases the grapple and the downdrafts can create a change in polarization between the cloud base and the surface of the ground on the earth which again cause lightning to strike the earth's surface so cloud to ground lightning but this is how it forms with the three different layers of temperature because the cloud is so tall and so vertically grown from the cumulus stage that it is going from the cloud base of around 2,000 feet all the way up to the tropopause so now we've got stage two we've got the mature thunderstorm cloud or mature cumulus cloud this 
gigantic beast of a cloud, this unique cloud with three layers of vertical developments, which is different to all the other types of clouds out there, and it has this myriad of features between the Amatus clouds, the Anvil, and the Virgo, and the downdrafts, and the updrafts, and the mesocyclones, which can form tornadoes and funnel clouds. You've got the shelf cloud, which by itself is incredible to see, and very awe-inspiring. You've got the overshoot top, which goes into the stratosphere. You've got this general movement of this huge cloud system going with the wind. And again, the wind's different directions between the surface direction of the wind to the upper troposphere wind direction, you're going to get wind shear. And this massive system of clouds and cumulus and nimbus clouds is going to start to rotate. And then we can form what's called a supercell, which is very ideal conditions for tornadoes and hook echoes. But in general, you've got this huge, very large system of strong updrafts of warm, moist air being brought up through the cloud, through this mesocyclone and you've got this strong downdrafts working to balance out the cloud between the upper troposphere and the lower cloud base you have the virgo which is the dissipating evaporating rain from the higher clouds around the anvil the anvil is where the cloud has to spread out because the tropopause and the stratosphere acts as like a ceiling for the cloud to kind of level off and be flattened at the top. The overshoot top is just the sheer energy and strength of the updrafts pushing up the cloud and latent heat and condensation beyond that troll pause and it overpowers it in a certain area right above the strong updrafts and right below that will be your wall cloud and your funnel cloud and possible tornadoes. You have the cumulus and, and stratus clouds kind of packed in behind as the clouds move in, in this case from left to right, so we'll have some of these cumulus clouds that form from the left, which are basically going to add in and accumulate to the main cloud to maintain its growth and size over a long period of time. Then we have the gust front. The gust front is, as it's approaching, the cold front is going to produce a strong downdraft in front of the shelf cloud or even help the shelf cloud to form and the shelf cloud will be a bunch of really thick dark nasty cloud that's extending down from the cloud base towards the surface and this will cause a lot of rain torrential rain and behind that some strong hail large hail and again the hail and the size of hail is a good indication of how big and strong the updrafts and downdrafts are and how long that hail has been in the cloud growing in size and eventually falling down with gravity. And you'll have the wall cloud behind that as the cloud moves across the surface. So the gust front and the cold front is that approaching thunderstorm cloud and all the other features will follow behind it. So of the 10 main cloud types, this cloud, the Cumin Nimbus or Thunderstorm cloud, is unique in so many ways, in size, in scale, in scope, in what it creates within the cloud, the hail, the grapple, the torrential rain, the wall clouds, the funnel clouds, the tornadoes, the gust fronts, the extreme amount of rain that's going to fall, the size, the coloration of the clouds, the different tones and shades of greys, and just the wind, the, the noise of tornadoes, just the immense size of these things moving across the Earth's surface as just a simple way of moving heat and water vapor from areas of the tropics to areas of higher latitudes. It's the same thing as a hurricane, just transferring heat and energy, and with that comes water vapor and condense water and rain so basically it's this extreme version of the water cycle moving within this cloud system which is absolutely amazing to see so as with most things in nature all good things must come to an end the thunderstorm or cumulus cloud isn't going to last forever the amount of energy and water vapor updrafts and downdrafts and the sheer drive of this cloud is going to begin rise mature and then slowly decay or dissipate like hurricanes do and these large cloud systems are going to run out of energy based on where they're moving and if there's no 
more influx or input of hot air in the warm air section and the amount of water vapor required to condense to keep this cloud going it's the same thing as a hurricane when it goes over land it's going to start to dissipate and break down and the downdrafts will start to overpower the updrafts as they cease to exist the downdrafts will happen causing more rain and the cloud will rain out and start to break down and form back into those smaller sections of cumulus clouds and single smaller cells and eventually back into nimbus clouds and remain stratus clouds at the cloud base and that vertical development will be no longer there and it'll just turn into a single layered cumulus or nimbus cloud now this could reform later on into another cumulus cloud but the conditions have to come back to where they were at stage one which is cumulus if that doesn't happen, then the storm is over and the system moves on, perhaps into a occluded front or a stationary front. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. And if you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on earth science.